This RX 9000 series from AMD has been unprecedented in a lot of different ways. It hit record sales numbers, it incredibly outpaces the direct NVIDIA competitor by a large margin, and now it also gives you free performance to a level I haven't seen before. Today, we're going to look at turning an RX 9070 into its older brother, the 9070 XT. We'll discuss how you can do it, what to expect, and just how much performance is available from a firmware tool. Week. Big shout out to Gertie over on the PCGH forum for being the first person to try this and showing everyone it's a real thing. We've linked all the resources we've used for this video down in the description. And this is actually a big deal. The performance bump is the most significant I've ever experienced of this kind before. We have a history on this channel of tweaking AMD cards and turning them into something that they're not supposed to be. Trucker Brett unlocked extra cores on the RX 460. Shouty Brett converted the RX 480 into a slightly better RX 580. And Sickly Color Graded Brett tuned Vega 56 into a Vega 64 and then even put them together in a crossfire abomination. And all of those were modest performance increases to the tune of just a few percentage points. But this RX 9070 mod lets us see up to 45% increases in some instances, but more realistically was double digit performance gains. Again, for free. AMD was really holding back on us with the launch of these cards. The trick is to just flash a 9070 XT BIOS onto the RX 9070, deceiving your GPU into thinking it's more powerful than AMD told it that it could be. But that is slightly more complicated than those words make it seem. What's not complicated is today's video sponsor, Jawa. Now, if you're not into tinkering and flashing your GPUs like we are, you can upgrade your PC in more conventional ways, like just buying different parts, specifically from today's sponsor, Jawa. Jawa.gg is bursting with crazy deals on everything from cards and CPUs to full-on ready-to-game PCs, but you really shouldn't be that shocked. Jawa is the number one marketplace for gamers to buy and sell PCs and PC hardware. They got to be number one because they put safety and security at the core of every transaction that takes place. Say you're looking to buy a GPU upgrade, you're browsing Java and you spot this awesome 7900 XT that you can't pass up. If you take a gander at this little check mark here, you'll know that this seller is one of the super duper trusted sellers officially verified by Java. Even without the little check, you can still put all your faith in a purchase from Java because they take the time to manually review every listing. So this 7900 XT, John Java himself took a look at it before you even knew it was there. Let's also say you have a 2060 hanging out in your PC right now. So that 7900 XT is a nice upgrade. You can turn that current 2060 into either cash or credit towards your next Java purchase. Simply answer a few questions about your component, and there you have it. You're on your way to a great upgrade. Now, if buying piece by piece isn't for you, Java also has a huge selection of fully built PCs to fit whatever your needs are. Java's PC Finder quiz pairs you with a list of computers perfect for the use cases you're looking for. Oh, and don't forget to share your builds and your crazy finds with other builders and gamers in the Java Discord. Their community is full of fellow enthusiasts willing to offer build knowledge, input, and even buying and selling advice. Check out what Java has in store for you, trade something in, grab a GPU, or pick up a whole PC. Use the link in the description to get started on your upgrade right now, and don't forget to use code UFD10 for 10% off, up to $10. Thanks to Java for sponsoring today's video. So, in previous attempts with something like the Vega 56, you would just download a Vega 64 BIOS and use a piece of software called ATI Flash, and it essentially just did the upgrading for you. But as of the time of recording this video, that program hasn't been updated for RDNA 4 cards and there's no alternative, so you have to revert to getting physical with your graphics card. And that's why I've been saying free. The unlock is free, and it's technically no cost if you have a CH341A programmer kit already lying around. But in case you don't have one of these rustling around in your underdrawers, the one we used was only $14 with next day shipping on Amazon, and it had everything we needed to accomplish this task. Now, before we dive into more, this is the part where I'm gonna get serious and address that there are risks to doing tweaks like this to your GPU. If you're not careful, overwrite something incorrectly, or just have extremely bad luck, you can brick your card and turn it into a paperweight. I've personally never had that happen in all of my efforts, but it's a real possibility. So note that you're taking your gaming thinking machine's life into your own hands here, and that it could end up going sideways. There are best practices you can follow, such as making sure your GPU has a dual BIOS setup and only flashing one of them and leaving the other stock, and always making sure you have a backup of your current BIOS 
just for changing anything. So that's the general warning. Let's talk about the specifics about how to make the RX 9070 go Super Saiyan. Firstly, you have to choose which BIOS you want to put on the card. As far as we know, you can choose nearly any XT BIOS to put on any 9070 card, but there are some restrictions, namely two things to keep in mind. That's four, two, two things to keep in mind. Firstly, the power connectors on your card and the XT card you're stealing from definitely matters. From what we've read, if the XT has three eight pin connectors, but your 9070 has only two, that's a fine situation. But if your 9070 uses regular eight pins and the XT uses the 12 volt high power connector or vice versa, that can cause problems and can confusion for your GPU. So make sure you don't flash a Nitro Plus BIOS onto a Steel Legend. Which actually, up until May 9th, we're holding a giveaway for this specific Nitro Plus over on our UFD Music YouTube live stream. The links for that are in the description. Secondly, your output slots also matter. If your 9070 has three DisplayPort and two HDMI, but the XT only has one HDMI, it can freak the card out as well. So make sure those match. But beyond that, again, based on our research, not personal testing, since we don't actually have access to more than one 9070 because we can't buy them. You can choose BIOSes from across manufacturers. That is going from Sapphire to PowerColor. Although I'd personally recommend just getting the fastest BIOS from the same manufacturer or even the same card design. And we haven't seen any 9070s not be capable of this. It seems that everyone who has tried has been successful, but there could be a few cards out there that this upgrade won't have the same effect on. So for our testing, we use the PowerColor RX 9070 Hellhound GPU as the foundation and flash the PowerColor Red Devil 9070 XT BIOS onto it. That took us from a 230 watt 9070 card up to a 330 to 360 watt experience. But we'll get into what that practically means for a performance in a second. Let's stay on how the BIOS flashing works here. Flashing the BIOS is Pretty simple, actually. You take off the cooler and the back plate, you locate the BIOS chip. It's the only chip with its form factor. It's a chunky rectangle with eight pins, on this card at least. Then you attach the clip from the USB CH341A programmer kit and flash the BIOS with a programming utility like Neo Programmer, which is what we used. Make sure you're orienting the clip correctly. There should be an arrow on the PCB and or an indent slash dot on one of the corners of the chip signifying pin one, and you use the correct voltage with the CH341A. In this specific case, our BIOS chip operates with 1.8 volts, so make sure you have that adapter set properly so it doesn't fry the chip. But again, this is where things can go terribly wrong, so quadruple check things on your side and ensure that everything's matching. To find the voltage your chip uses, some softwares will tell you, including Neo Programmer, but to double check, you can just Google the chip model number and you should be able to find a data sheet that specifies the voltage. And setting up Neo Programmer is easy as well. Just extract the downloaded zip, plug in the CH341A, install drivers that come bundled as an EXE, plug in the cable from the clip on the GPU, select your BIOS chip from the menu, read the chip to confirm it's communicating properly. You can control F, search for A and D, and something should come up, and then save the data as a backup, erase, read again to verify it's blank, write the chip with the new BIOS, then reassemble the card. Also, make sure you have some good thermal paste on hand for reassembly because you're really gonna need it. This upgrade will make your 9070 sing with painful fiery screams. Maybe this whole process will get easier in the future and a software like ATI Flash will support just doing this from your operating system. Or there were even talks in the forum that some AIB partners are trying to release their own tools on this, which would be dope. But for now, a physical assault on your GPU is the only way to go. And in case I I haven't said it enough yet. Be very careful when you're doing this. Cross check every data point. I don't want you to have a half a grand decorative doorstop. So now let's talk about the numbers, the performance gains going from Super Saiyan 1 to Super Saiyan 2. The Hellhound 9070 with the Red Devil 9070 XT personality absolutely rips. We're gonna be putting FPS graphs on the screen to show you the differences. So pause wherever you want, but just know the improvements are quite good. So. At stock, our card ran at 2.59 gigahertz boost clock with 230 watts of power. With the XT BIOS, it went up to 3.06 gigahertz and 330 watts. But 
With overclocking and undervolting, we were able to boost that up to 3.255 gigahertz, increase the RAM by an extra 200, and got it consuming 363 watts. A 25% clock speed increase with 57% higher power consumption, which matters a lot. That 363 is more than this Hellhound was designed to cool, so the temperature numbers went up. And it did run quite a bit hotter than stock, which was 55C overall and 70 to 75C on the hotspot. With just the XT BIOS, it ran at 70C overall and 90 to 100C hotspot. And while overclocked, it went to 75 Celsius overall and 95 to 110 Celsius hotspot, depending on the game and the length of time under load. So things got toasty for both the core and the hotspot. And keep in mind that while the hotspot of 110 degrees Celsius is the safe limit from AMD, you will experience some thermal throttling and it may shorten the life of the card or limit your gains. So best practices here would be to start with a beefier cooler on your 9070, ideally one that shares the same design as a high TDP 9070 XT. Like start with a Nitro Plus 9070 and then flash the Nitro Plus XT BIOS onto it since the triple slot cooler can likely handle a bit more than what the Hellhound can receive. Also, it's not just heat you have to consider. Due to those electrons jiggling a lot faster, the fans also spin a lot faster, so it's louder than normal. So you're trading temps and noise for gaming performance gains. So let's talk about what that looked like for us. Our best results came in synthetic benchmarks. In 3 d Mark Steel Nomad, we saw a 25% jump with the Overclock XT BIOS to come in at just under what our Aorus Elite 9070 XT performed at. In Furmark, the 1080p benchmark gave us a 43% gain and actually ended up beating the Aorus 9070 XT. Bigger numbers for sure, but they don't fully translate into gaming gains, but there are still significant gains to be had in your favorite video games. We tested 20 games with a variety of resolutions, upscaling setups, and graphical settings and performed a total of 61 tests with the 9070 card in its various states. We really attempted to give a thorough picture that the performance uplift isn't a fluke in a game or two, but real substantial gains in most situations. In Black Myth Wukong at 4K cinematic, we went from 43 FPS to 52. Cyberpunk 4K went from 68 all the way up to 83. Indiana Jones 4K Ultra saw massive gains, going from 97 FPS at stock, 99 with the XT BIOS, and then 113 with the Overclock XT BIOS. We had a couple games where there wasn't much, if any, change, such as GTA 5, which actually saw performance loss, but for the most part, it was limited to just that title. Overall, just plopping the Red Devil XT BIOS onto the 9070 Hellhound in 4K gaming gave us 7.6% better FPS and even improved our 0.1% lows by 13%. But when we overclocked the XT BIOS, that pushed our increases to 13.76% on average frame rate and 22% for 0.1% lows. Again, that's the largest increase I've ever seen for a simple firmware change like this. Now, let's break it down a bit more detail like. Starting with the 20 games and 61 tests, we got an overall average of 101 FPS at stock, 107 FPS for the XT BIOS for a 7% boost, and 114 FPS with the XT BIOS overclocked for a 13% boost. To break it down even further, in 16 games at 1440p ultra settings, native resolution with no ray tracing or upscaling, stock got 128, the XT BIOS got 134, which is an increase of 5%, and then the OC got 142 for an 11% game. With 15 games at 4K ultra settings, quality upscaling and no ray tracing, stock got 110 FPS, the XT BIOS got 119 for a gain of 8%, and the OC version got 125 for a gain of 14%. Then the seven games at 4K Ultra settings with quality upscaling with ray tracing. Stock got 60 FPS, the XT BIOS got 65 for an 8% jump, and the OC got 71 for a total of 17% boost. In the original 10 game 41 test averages we used for our 9070 XT review, which you can check out right up there, the stock 9070 got 88 FPS, the XT BIOS hit 93, the XT BIOS overclocked got 100, while the factory XTs, the Steel Legend got 97, the Tai Chi got 100, tying our Hellhound right here, and the Aorus Elite got 101, just barely beating 
what is a significantly cheaper card. And when we pair it down to the 1440 Ultra Native 10 game test, the stock 9070 got 109 FPS, the XT BIOS hit 115, the overclock version got 124, and then the Steel Legend hit 119, the Tai Chi got 124, and the Oris Elite got 124. Again, the 9070 kept pace with high end XT cards and beat out the entry level XT card. And it's worth noting that the XT BIOS overclock card actually was the most consistent of all the cards with the best 0.1% lows of anything that we tested. So if you're willing to take the risk and run the card hot, you can get the practical gaming performance to the same levels as a stock factory XT. And as we found before in our test in that review of the 9070 XT, the 9070 XT was only able to reliably overclock to get another two to 3% boost. So you aren't even missing out on anything there by still going with the 9070. Our overclocked Oris Elite didn't pull too far ahead of our massive weak tweaked Hellhound 9070. All in all, this is a daunting task, although in reality, if you're comfortable building a PC and take a little time to read the guides and watch a couple videos, you shouldn't have an issue flashing the BIOS. And it's a great practice if you ever accidentally brick a card and need to fix it. Then you know how to tweak a BIOS. And taking the couple hours to test and dial in your overclock is definitely worth it, as again, you can double the performance boost over just flashing the BIOS. I had our new benchmarker on the UFD team do all of this without my direct guidance, and he was able to manage it without me providing any assistance. So while it seems complex, it is a manageable upgrade that can be done. Again, if you're careful and thorough, I really don't want any comments of people reporting unusable cards after trying this out. But I honestly can't believe AMD left this much performance on the table with the ARCs 9070. It makes sense that they had to separate the cards with compute units, then, but missing eight CUs doesn't seem to matter too much for the RX 9070. And if you can get a 9070 for less than any 9070 XT, it appears you can upgrade it to get an even better bang for buck value GPU. It's an absolute winner to anyone who's dollar conscious. And if you try this tweaking out and get a 9070 going turbo, please let me know down in the comments. I wanna hear about your experience. Also, let us know if there are any other tweaking PC hardware videos you want us to do in the future. And don't forget, we are giving away the Nitro Plus 9070 XT over on our UFD Music YouTube stream. We've also got a 7800X3D plus 7900GRE PC giveaway happening on the UFD Music Twitch stream, and the main UFD Tech Twitch stream has a 9800X3D plus RTX 5090 PC as the giveaway prize. So come check out any of those streams if you're interested and chat with us about your PC flashing experience.